In this short video series, we're going to use the Vault on AWS project to deploy a secure, scalable, and production-ready version of HashiCorp's Vault on AWS. Now, once we've got the project deployed, we'll have a lockdown service for managing secrets, keys, and well, pretty much any sensitive data. Now, speaking of the project, let me hop over to my browser here. You can see it here, it's up on GitHub. It is free and open source. Uh, the documentation is quite thorough and will <laughs> pretty much answer any question that you have, including how to do uh, most of what we're gonna do um, in this series. But I know that reading through documentation can be quite the grind. So this video series is here as an alternative. Now, if you're sweating bullets, uh, don't worry, because uh, A, we're going to start from scratch, and B, almost all of it's automated. The infrastructure, the security, the networking, all the nuts and bolts. The, the, the point of this project is to make it so that you can just use Vault. Uh, you know, if you've tried to set up Vault in the past, well, you know that it, it can be a little bit of an uphill battle. There's a lot of different ways you can go about doing it. And as great as the, the HashiCorp learning resources are, uh, they're geared more towards intermediate to advanced advanced users, uh, well, in a lot of different areas. Uh, but with this project, you can just spin it up and start using it with your applications and services instead of having to worry about all of the infrastructure. Um, and, and you can also have confidence in the way that things are set up and learn if you want to. Uh, it's very outlined here in the documentation and the architecture section, so everything that's going on. And of course, if you're a Terraform fanatic, you can dig through the source code as well. Now, uh, because we're gonna start from scratch, meaning like I don't even have <laughs> the AWS command line interface uh, set up on this machine, uh, you don't really need to know a ton about Vault, Terraform, or AWS even uh, to follow along, because we're gonna do all of it. We're gonna do everything that you need to do. Uh, obviously, the more you know, uh, the more it helps. But again, this, uh, this project is to make all of this easier, uh, not harder. Uh, but first, let's take a look at the finish line. So once we're done doing things, so what are we going to have? Well, once we're done, we're obviously going to have a production deployment of Vault, and we're going to have it behind a domain of our choosing. So in my case here, I've got it up here on secrets.jcolemorrison.com, and you'll be able to have it behind a domain of your choosing that you own. <laughs> you got you to own it. And uh, here I'm logged in as my Vault root user, and you'll get your root credentials automatically after you complete a uh, deployment. So uh, you actually don't even have to worry about unsealing your Vault or initializing it. Uh, this takes care. This project takes care of all of that for you. Now in here, I've gone ahead and I've set up some things uh, just to give you a taste of what's going to happen. Don't worry, we're going to walk through some basic workflows with Vault uh, at the end. Uh, but you know, I don't want to spend too much time in on here uh, up front. Uh, but I've got some secrets here made, so some secret key values for some data. So, so I've got a database key and password and some developer keys here that we're going to use as an example. Uh, I've also gone ahead and made some security policies. So a dev policy that uh, if attached to a user will only allow them to access the developer secrets and then one for databases that do the exact same thing. And then I've also gone ahead and set up the user, uh, the username and password method of authentication so that we can have users. <laughs> and I've gone ahead and some created some users. So we've got database Dave here, as well as developer Don. So we've got all of this set up. And how do we go about accessing the vault as these users, right? So let me go ahead and hop over to my terminal here. And I've got three shells open. Each represents a different server that might need different credentials. So the first one uh, is just my own computer and the other two are EC2 instances. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend that my computer here is the database server. So how would I go about getting some database values out of it as database Dave? Well, first up, you gotta have Vault installed. So <laughs> make sure that you've got that done. And the second thing is that we need to tell the Vault CLI where it is that our Vault is. What you know, where are we sending these requests to? So to do that, we're gonna do use the environment variable that Vault looks for, for called Vault address, and we're gonna input into it our domain name. So secrets for me, this is secrets.jcolemorrison.com. And with that done, it now knows where to send requests. So why don't we try and list the different database keys that are up there? So we're gonna do vault, and we're gonna tell vault that we wanna do something with key values, and we want to list all the key values that are at the secret database path. 
And when we do this, we're going to see, oh, hey, there's an error. Why is there an error? Well, because I didn't log in, right? <laughs> so I should probably log in as database Dave. So let's do that. We'll do a vault, login, method, user pass, username equals database Dave. And the password, well, that happens to be database PWD. So <laughs> very secure. And with that done, the vault will go ahead and log me in. It'll create a token for me. And that token will be cached so that from this point forward, I can make requests and they will be authenticated. And here we can also see that I have two security policies, the default one, which just lets me manage my own authentication as database Dave. And then that DB policy that is going to scope what I can work with in those secrets to just those database values. So let's try to list those secrets again. And now that we've logged in, oh, we can see that there are two keys at the secrets database path, key and password. I was uh, very creative with those uh, values there. <laughs> uh, but let's get one of them. So we're going to say vault using the key value uh, command. Let's get the secret value, the secret key at secret database. And we'll just get password. And when we do this, We'll get some metadata about the value as well as the value itself. And that happens to be ABC123. <laughs> All right, so this might seem simplistic and yeah, it is, but the, the neat thing here is that all of these requests are done over HTTPS, so meaning that traffic is encrypted. Uh, when the data we send gets up the vault, so if we were gonna put a value here, when that, that data gets up the vault, it's encrypted again, and then it's stored in DynamoDB where it's encrypted yet again. <laughs> so it's about as locked down as you're going to get it. But the other fun part here is that we're playing by Vault's rules. So if I try to get those developer secrets, so I've been working with the, the uh, database secrets, but we can see over here under secrets that there is a database set of secrets, or not a database, sorry. If I tried to get the developer secrets, we can see that there's an API key and another key. Well, what if we do that as developer Dave? Well, we'll say Vault, KV list, secret, we want to list all this, the keys uh, at the secret dev path. Well, this is not going to work. And it's not going to work because database Dave here can only interact with the database values. Okay, so now let's play the role of uh, developer Don here. So developer Don is a user that I created using the user pass authentication method. And by the way, that's just one way you can do stuff. There's a ton of other ways. Well, let me go back here. So now we're going to play as developer Don, and we're going to do it on our EC2 server here, our EC2 instance. So as we know, the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have Vault installed. So just to ensure, I'm going to run Vault version. It is there. And then we know the next thing we need to do is tell it exactly where we should be talking to Vault, or tell where the endpoint that Vault should be sending requests to. So we know that's secrets.jcolemorson.com. And then also we know that we need to log in. So we're going to log in using the user pass method, the user pass method. And username is developer Don. And the password is the uncrackable developer PWD. No one will ever guess that, right? All right, and so with that done, we now have our token that's been cached for us. And by cached, I mean, it's actually just uh, put here. I mean, just listed. It's actually just exists in this little dot file here. So if you wanna log out, you just delete it. But we'll, we'll talk about that later. You don't have to worry about that right now. And now that I am developer done, can I get the list of the secrets at the depth path? Yes, I can. We can see that there's two there. There's the API key and the other key. So let's get one of them. So we're going to do the KV get. So this is going to get one of those values at the path dev API key. And when we do this, we'll get the metadata back as well as the value, which happens to be very useful, GHI789. All right. But just to show that we're still playing by Vault's rules, what happens if we try and list the database values. Well, let's do that here. 
Well, of course, we're going to get a forbidden. We can't do that because developer Don isn't cleared to do so. Uh, when we ran, let me run it again because there's nothing wrong with just running login again. When we uh, logged in, we can see here that the only two policies we have are the default policy and the dev policy, whereas when we logged in as database Dave, we had the DB policy. Now, you probably, if you haven't worked a lot with Vault, then maybe those don't make a lot of sense. But in a nutshell, this policy that I've created is saying you can do anything with dev secrets. And the other one, of course, as we said, is saying you can do anything with database secrets. Okay, so that's fun, but uh, what about random servers or malicious users trying to mess with us? Well, let me hop over here into this third EC2 instance. In this third EC2 instance, uh, let's go ahead and make sure Vault's installed. So we're gonna just do a Vault version. Yes, it is installed. We need to tell Vault about what endpoint we're trying to speak to. And we know that's just the same one that it's been. And now, let's say that developer Don here is a loud mouth and goes around, you know, tweeting his credentials and let's try and log in as him. So vault login method user pass, username developer Don, password developer PWD. All right, we're gonna do that. And you may think this is because I'm on AT&T Fiber, but it's not. <laughs> and nope, it's just gonna hang. Nothing happens. And that's because when you deploy this, uh, this vault on AWS project, one of the things you can do is scope the endpoint to only allow access from certain CIDR blocks uh, or IP address ranges. Uh, and by or IP address ranges, I mean CIDR blocks or IP address ranges. And we can see our requests finally timed out here. Uh, but even if this was completely open, again, they can't do anything unless they've been given some way to authenticate, right? So, uh, and by the way, also traffic is encrypted and the endpoint itself is DDoS protected with AWS Shield. So if you wanted to leave it open and accessible from anywhere, well, you'd be more than fine to do so. Now, uh, we'll see later on that with this project, you can also deploy it in private mode, which will lock it down so that it's not publicly accessible at all. The only way to access it when it's in that mode uh, is from other private networks that you explicitly clear. All right. So there is a lot more <laughs> that you can do with Vault, a lot more. We, you know, we've really just skimmed the tip of the iceberg here of what you can do with it. And that's mainly because this project and series is about getting it all set up and running uh, in a secure and production ready manner. Uh, using Vault itself, it's an entirely different adventure. Uh, however, you know, like I've said earlier, you know, if you've tried to set up Vault in a scalable and secure way before, well, you know, it's not really a walk in the park. Your learning resources, while better than most out there, they're kind of vague in terms of how to set it up uh, in order to keep it modular and more open to different configurations, but they also assume that you're an intermediate to advanced user in a lot of, a lot of different technologies. This project, on the other hand, doesn't really have any requirements to get up and running, especially since we're going to do it all from scratch. Speaking of which, let's get started.